Well, good evening. I appreciate you tuning in tonight for just a few minutes. Um, I felt like this natural transition time as we start back to school just warranted us pausing and praying. And so whether you're watching live uh, this Wednesday night or catching this in the next couple of days before uh, school kicks back off again, um, I hope you'll take time just to listen through. There are four specific groups of people that I want to pray for tonight. And that doesn't mean we're not praying for everyone in our community, but four specific groups that God laid on my heart. You know, as we move towards school, we're in this natural transition season. Uh, you could see it sort of as a, as a reset, but it's definitely a rhythm shift from where we've been in the summer and even last semester. And so uh, in this particular season change, uh, Courtney and I have learned over the years of raising kids every year, there's emotions that go with this time of year. And so whether you're parent, grandparent, whatever season of life you're in as a student, uh, there are certain emotions that go with this time of year. And so I just want to acknowledge those. I know for some, there's kind of a nervous excitement. There's a new season ahead. Um, maybe as a parent, you're ready to move into the next season. There's an excitement about that. You know, uh, the fact that life is back to sort of a rhythm over the next few months. That's exciting for some people after chaotic summer. Um, and so new opportunities, football season comes, these things are ahead of us. And while there are ner uh, nerves involved, there's an excitement about the anticipation of, of this season to come. Also, another emotion that I think comes with the season is fear and anxiety, uh, the the kind of uh, the side of that that's negative that impacts us. And so for some, and the reason I think we wrestle during this season is there's unknown ahead of us. And, um, you know, kids are going back to school, but maybe for some, we're sending them to school for the first time or we're sending them for their last first day. And those are hard, and there's several checkpoints in between uh, that's hard. It may be a big transition year for you in life if you're a student, uh, kind of heading into a new and in, uh, a new place. And so for parents, for teachers, and for students, this can hit in many different ways. I think we're asking questions like, you know, what does COVID look like this year? What, what does uh, life look like? What does our economy look like? You know, what does our, what does our city look like this year as we move into the fall? So I think that can cause some fear and anxiety. And that's one of the reasons that I felt led to pray tonight. And then another emotion that I think people wrestle with, and you may not even be able to understand this or why this is, but it's depression. I think as we let go of summer season and we move into the structure of fall, there's a feeling of loss that can come with that. And so we anticipate how much more this season may require of us when you look ahead. Uh, or maybe you're reminded of fa past failures. And so I just want to come tonight and speak hope. And so we're going to talk to the Lord and I want to invite you uh, to go to the Lord right where you are as the Holy Spirit just kind of speaks into our homes and into our cars and wherever we're watching from and here on our campus uh, tonight and speaks hope to all these emotions that we feel. And so the first group of people that I want to specifically pray for and ask you to just lift up a prayer for in your heart right now or maybe out loud, whatever, whatever way you pray to the Lord, um, I would encourage you to do that right now as we pray. But I want to pray first for kids and students, for our next generation, uh, for college and 18 to 20-somethings who are moving into the next season of life. And let me read this verse. It's been a verse we focused on the last couple of weeks, but 2 Corinthians 5.17 Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has come. With this new season is an opportunity for you to step into new life. And so my encouragement would be stay, stay well, uh, live bold, put on Jesus in this season and step into that new life. Find your purpose that God has in this season. Know your identity, know who you are. Let the Lord inform you on who you are before you ever step onto that campus. If you have a little one, inform them, remind them on the way to school, remind them this week who they are in Jesus, what God says about them, that they are a child, that they are chosen, that they have a purpose, uh, that there was a plan laid out before they were even born. And this is a part of that plan to go and live loud for Jesus, to lead people to know, love, and live. Even in elementary school as they go, encourage them. And so here's what I want to do tonight. Can we just pause and let's just pray for our next generation. So God, I know that uh, this covers a wide spectrum of, uh, of young ones, but Lord, tonight for those that will be starting elementary school around Hall County, Gainesville, and wherever people are watching from, 
Lord, we just wanna ask you to bless them. Lord, those that are called by your name, Lord, those that have moms and dads and aunts and uncles and others pouring Jesus into them, that they would be reminded who they are in Christ. Lord, they wouldn't step on that campus uh, and be filled up by what everybody else says because, Lord, I know that's a temptation as we scroll and as we listen. Lord Jesus, let your word remind us who we are. Lord, set that stake in the ground as we step forward. God, I pray for all those making transitions every year of transition comes with new challenges. And so, Lord, for our, uh, for our middle school students, those that are beginning middle school, those that are seventh and eighth graders, all across our city and our county, Lord, we pray strength for them. Lord, what a great opportunity to live loud for the name of Jesus, Lord, to live out faith, to love people well, to work hard. So, God, I just pray that the nerves would be eased and, Lord, that you would be with them. And, God, for our high schoolers, I pray, Lord, that they will realize the influence, that they'll just be through the Holy Spirit reminded how influential their lives are right now. Lord, it's not something to survive. It's something to live with purpose in this year. So I pray for many great memories to be made, but Lord, also uh, that, that those students, those high schoolers called by your name, Jesus, they will live for you. They will love people so well. Uh, God, they'll live a you matter lifestyle. And God, for our, uh, for our college students and those moving into another season of life, right now, Lord, our young adults, I wanna pray for them because this is a transition time as well. Lord, I pray you bless and Lord, you just make them bold for Jesus' name. Lord, let them fall in love with the word of God and, and live it out this year, Jesus. That's our prayer. I know as your people, everyone watching right now, Lord, we're crying that out to you in Jesus' name tonight, that you would bless our kids, that you would save those that don't know you and God, that those that do, you would raise them up, that you would raise up some godly leaders that will, that will live with love in this world, God, that won't be ashamed of the name of Jesus in this world. So Lord, we pray over them tonight. We know that many are walking into difficult seasons and difficult years of life, but Lord, you are with them. So Lord, I just speak that over them tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. The second group of people I wanna pray for, it's, uh, it's for parents. I'm guessing there's probably parents or families who are connected uh, to a kid or student who's going back to school this year, I want to remind you of a verse, Proverbs 22, 6. Here's what the writer says, direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. And so what this reminds us of is that we have such a great responsibility, parents, your, your kids are about to be spending hours per day uh, underneath somebody else's teaching. And hopefully they're getting an education and they're, they're growing as a person. But did you know the primary responsibility for leading that kid to Jesus and help them discover their purpose, it's, it's you. And so just as your pastor and friend and a dad who got it wrong a lot of times and tried to get it right, I wanna remind you, don't underestimate your voice and your influence uh, this season as you move in, you have a great responsibility to direct your kids onto the right path, which we know is the way of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the new life he has for them, the mission to lead others to know and love and live that new life. Your kids are already on that mission. They're not growing up one day to be on it. They are. So I want to encourage you, this great responsibility can come with a great reward. You can look back one day after these seasons of raising your kids up and I believe you can hear the Lord say, well done. They won't get it perfectly right and neither will you. But I just wanna say there is an urgency right now about pouring Jesus into your kids. And so can we take just a moment and pray uh, for, uh, for you, for parents? So I wanna encourage you, say a prayer over yourself right now. Invite the Lord into your own, uh, into your own weaknesses and into your own stresses and fears and nervousness tonight. And so, Lord Jesus, I want to pray in your name tonight that, Lord, our families and those that are sending kids back to school would just have mental health, that they would have strong identity in you. And God, when the enemy attacks the mind, that they will be strong and able to come back with the word of God. Lord, I just pray that they will be emotionally present. Lord, there are so many things fighting for the attention of our parents, trying to manage finances and trying to make marriages work and trying to work in blended families. And Lord, just trying to manage life, it's so hard. It sucks the life out. So God, I just wanna pray a supernatural anointing of the Holy Spirit of God that the Holy Spirit would give emotional presence 
Lord, that they would be present with their kids in the mornings before they go, even if just for a moment. And Lord, that there would be a pause time, maybe for reflection or prayer at night, just to be present with the kids. So Lord, I pray that, that it would be important. Lord, that it would be necessity as they the parents have the ability to draw kids together. So Lord, I pray that our parents would be strong in faith. Uh, it seems like there's so many outside voices trying to tell us what our kids need to be and, and what we should do. And Lord, it's overwhelming. When we scroll our feed, God, it's overwhelming. So Lord, I just ask you, will you give us a strong inner faith that we can know that we are leading our kids in the right direction based on what you say and what your word says, God, what you're speaking to our hearts, what your people who love you and who are also grounded in truth are saying and encouraging us with. Lord, I pray that over our parents tonight in Jesus' name, God, that you would just guide them by the Spirit. Lord, I, I, I remember the so many helpless times, and we still have those, but in the past, especially where we're like, Lord, we don't know what to do for our kids right now. We don't know how to walk through this season with them. And so I remember those times so well, God, that it, it just strikes my heart. And I know there are some families that are there right now. And Lord, I'm gonna ask you, please give them guidance of your Spirit. Lord, remind them that they are not alone. As they seek you, God, that you're gonna be guiding them. You're gonna be guiding through truth, guiding through the word, guiding through that voice that speaks to us in our hearts and just gives us affirmation. So Lord, I pray that tonight over every parent. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Well, the next group of people that I wanna pray for is uh, our teachers, our educators, administrators, all those who serve in Gainesville, uh, schools and Hall County schools and beyond to wherever you're tuning in from. But I just want to first, if you're an educator watching this right now, and actually it'd be good for everybody, just for a moment, take a breath. Just take a deep breath and breathe out. God has you. I understand because my wife started back at, in the school system this week, and I understand the the pressures and the busyness, and I think it's at every single level in our educational system. We have great leaders who I would argue, uh, who are, argue love the Lord and are trying to listen and, and love this community and wanna do what's best. We have so many great administrators, so many of you out there that love, love Jesus and you're trying to live loud, but you already feel the weight, and so I just wanna say, breathe. First Peter 5, 7, I think was written for you in this season, and here's what it says. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Most of the things you uh, are probably feeling, the stress load you're feeling, you probably can't do a lot about some of it anyway. And so tonight's for you is just about handing it over to him. And so here's what I wanna do. Let's pray tonight. If your child has a teacher and you know their name already, you know their names, a coach they'll have this year. I want you to right now lift up those names to Jesus. You can even tune me out for a moment and just pray for them, pray specifically for them as they influence your child this year. Um, and I wanna pray uh, tonight, Lord Jesus, for all of our teachers, administrators, principals, for our superintendents, for Dr. Schofield, Dr. Williams, Lord, as they lead this community, Jesus, uh, we just pray over them, God, you will give wisdom. Lord, I pray for the teachers that feel overwhelmed right now by anxiety and fear and worry. Lord, that you would just, even in this moment, just speak a breath of fresh air into their soul. God, that they would feel you working and know that it's you with them, Lord. I pray strength, just unimaginable strength. I know that, that people are already already exhausted from trying to get ready for this year. And so, Lord, even now, with all that worry, that whirlwind of worry and fear that's going on in the hallways of our schools and just that stress that our educators feel, Lord, I just pray tonight over them that you will speak peace, God. You know where everyone lives. You know what everyone is going through right now. And so, God, we pray that just the power of the Spirit would go out and speak peace and healing and hope, Lord, that you, you have them this year. Lord, we place them in your hands and when they're too tired, when our teachers that are influencing the kids that we love, when they're tired and when they're worn and yet they have to go on, Lord, we just wanna come alongside and, and pray. Lord, come alongside and encourage and give and support where we can as a community and especially as the people of Riverbend Church, Lord, we desire that. And so, God, tonight I also pray that there will be full of love, Lord, that uh, every single student that comes into their path, Lord, is an opportunity to influence for your glory. Lord, whether that's a kind word, Lord, whether that's just offering a word of hope or encouragement, 
So God, I pray that you will just let our teachers be filled with love Lord, remind them of their purpose in this season as well. And so God also, uh, that they would find purpose in their work. I'm so blessed because so many people that I run into in our community who work in schools, they have a calling on their lives and you can just sense it, Lord, I feel it. So Lord, I pray you would remind them why they do what they do. Lord, it's not just a job. It literally is changing the future through influencing our kids, through teaching, education. So God, I pray that you would help them find that purpose and be be reminded of that calling that I believe you ultimately must place on a life of a teacher who loves what they do. God, that calling that there is a purpose. And so also, Lord, finally, we, we ask that you would help them realize the impact that they are having. Sometimes we don't say thank you enough And so, God, I just want to say thank you for great teachers, for the men and women who lead this community. Uh, God, also, I pray that they would just hear this prayer over them, Lord, that we are grateful. God, we are so grateful. And so, God, tonight we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Um, I want you to know, no matter what season you're in, if you're the student, the parent, you're the educator, you're not alone there really is an army of people, and I know there are others that uh, around Gainesville that are part of the church that love you, but the people of Riverbend, we love you, and we're here for you. We pray for you. We're, we're trying to do everything we can to help you win because we know it's hard. But here's what I want to offer up. If you'll shoot us uh, a DM right now on Facebook or whenever you're watching this, uh, they're going to forward that to me. Um, and if there's a specific way that we can pray, I'd love for you to just send me as your teacher, what school are you going to and how specifically can I pray and can our staff pray? Because I want to I want intentionally pray for you over the next week or so uh, about this school year. And so if you'll send us a message right now, uh, Allie, who's checking up on this, she'll forward it to me and then I can, uh, I can pray for you and also uh, just maybe even drop a prayer card in the mail to you. I'd love to do that if you'll let us no, and so just remember this, you're not alone. There's one more group of people that I wanna pray for tonight while I have you because I know there are some prayer warriors watching this and, and you're praying with me. Um, <clears throat> and that's our healthcare servants. Um, sometimes the, the, we think about going back to school and I know just from lately I visited friends in the hospital um, more, more than I wish I had to go um, to see people that are hurting and going through hard things and um, but being there, you can sense like an urgency and uh, just a stress that's also there as the season changes uh, around. You know, we've been through a tough, tough season the last two years. And so I know many, many of you are healthcare workers and servants. You're part of Riverbend Church and, and we love you. We've been praying for you and trying to come alongside you. But I just want to take a second and just for Northeast Georgia, for all those healthcare providers here uh, that take care of our kids in a lot of ways, that take care of our families in a lot of ways that kind of are on the front lines when it comes to things like the COVID battle that we've been in uh, in the past bit. And then, you know, many, many, many other things that uh, that they are there to walk us through and to to help us through. And so I just want you to know we love you and we're here for you and we're going to pray for you. So will you join me and let's just Let's just pray tonight. Actually, before we pray, I want to I want to read this verse because I had it in my notes here, but I want to share it with you. There was a time, kind of at the end of Jesus' ministry, where he came to. Uh, it, it's kind of a picture of heaven, and he's divided people out: those that that were true followers of his, and those that weren't. And he looks at the followers and he said, "Come, you who are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you." He says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. And then there's this line, I was sick and you cared for me. You may never have thought of your profession as something that's actually holy and ordained by God. But especially if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, literally your job is a calling that God has placed over you. And so I wanna say not only thank you, but I believe that it is a holy calling. It's something that the Lord has allowed you to be involved with, and you're impacting our community. And so we wanna pray for you tonight. So Lord, I wanna pray for all of our healthcare workers across our city, across our county, that Father, you will uh, just give them um, the peace and the strength that they need to press on through this season, Lord. Uh, For many of them are sending their kids to school are somehow involved through sports and other things as well. And so God, we just pray over them tonight. Lord, we pray that uh, you will give strength and also that you will just allow, Lord, you are the great healer and you've given so much wisdom through medicine. 
But Lord, I just pray that, that you'll give a, a, a Holy Spirit dose of wisdom to those that are caring for others who are sick during this time. So Lord, I pray for strength and peace, for energy that's needed, for mental alertness. Lord, we pray blessings over them. God, more, more than anything else, I pray that all would be drawn to you, Jesus, and that new life you offer, the new life you extended to me many years ago and, and many here at Riverbend, Lord, that we would be drawn to that new life as we sense your spirit drawing us and as we, we get around other people who have the spirit. And so, God, that is our prayer, Lord. It's really about this community, about your people about our great city, Gainesville, and, and the county we're in, Hall County, Lord, that you would bless us, Lord. So tonight, that's our prayer, Lord. We love you, Jesus, and we pray in your name. And everybody said with me tonight, amen. Well, listen to this. I want you to know that you matter. If you've been with us a while, you know what I'm gonna say. We are a church that wants to look outward and say, uh, I see you, I hear you, and I care about you. I don't think there's a better way to share Jesus in this next season of life. I don't think there's a better way to say, I am hope, we are hope, than just to look at people in our path and say, you matter, to just do what the Bible says and sometimes consider others better than ourselves, to put others before ourselves, to say, you matter. And so that's an attitude I hope you'll live with. This past Sunday, we gave out rocks. You may remember that. I don't even know if you can see it. It's really, really small. But the, the idea was you stick it in your shoe and you be reminded that, that, uh, that we are hope this week. And so just a reminder, maybe you need to drop this in your, in your, your kid's shoes, you know, the ones they're gonna wear, just drop it in there as a reminder to, that they will live with the you matter attitude. Or maybe if you're a teacher and you already know as soon as you wake up in the morning, the stress is gonna just drop you a rock in your shoe. Go outside right now, find your rock, put it in that shoe you're gonna wear, put it somewhere you'll see it, and you'll know. That's like a little pebble in your shoe reminding me I need to live a you matter life today. And here's the cool thing. As we live that life, we usually find hope and encouragement of the Lord as we do. So you know this, you're loved and God's gonna use us this semester. He's gonna use you this semester as we go out into our city, just living this We Are Hope lifestyle. Man, I love you. Uh, I can't wait to see you this Sunday at Riverbend. Have a great night.